Welcome to Rocketship, the home of epic React Native content. I'm Simon Grimm, creator of Galaxies.dev, and today we have another solo episode. Why am I still saying this? Well, you know the game. Today we want to talk about a couple of interesting news from the React Native ecosystem, and I want to share some updates regarding what I'm building. So today is, when this episode goes live, actually the first day of the AppJS, which means there will be a ton of updates very soon in the next week. For this week, let's talk about a few probably niche topics, but they are still interesting. One thing I found on X is that reanimated 4 beta 4 is actually out. Now, why is this cool? Well, remember a couple of months ago, I think it was actually last year, when reanimated announced CSS animation support. That was quite a big thing. But then, as always, with news and excitement, it drops off. And I honestly kind of forgot about it almost. So that brought it back to my attention that the beta 4 is out. They have now support for React Native 78, 79 and 80. Uh, they have some animations for CSS um, or some fixes for these CSS animations and general stability improvements. I think they're not too far off from a stable release in what I've heard. And looking at the long list of beta 4, if what's changed, so many fixes in here and features, I think Reanimated 4 is going to be a really, really great step forward. I think uh, if you haven't watched my video on it in the past, CSS animations are a cool addition, um, but they will not replace what we currently have in Reanimated. So it will only get better from here. You will still have the usual way to use Reanimated with version 4, but you also additionally can use CSS animations if that feels easier for you. And they will also, I think, split up internally some parts to make it easier. We talked about it before that they also want to uh, move this worklet thing out of reanimated so you can actually use worklets just with react native and background stuff that is another topic i'm really really excited about so keep an eye hopefully gonna see an announcement for reanimated very soon then what i already said today if you're listening on the first day of this on thursday it is the first day of the appjs conference this is probably the biggest conference around react native and expo Last year I was there as well. It is an amazing experience. I highly recommend it to everyone. And this year, I think we're going to see some pretty cool things once again. So just looking at the list of speakers, you're going to see so many epic names in there, so many great topics that you will hear about. And I will try to bring most of the stuff uh, in an easy to digest format to you over the next couple of weeks. All the talks from the FJS will be on YouTube. You can also follow this in a live stream as far as I know, at least that was the case last year and I highly recommend it. So if you're listening to this episode when it comes out, you still got a chance to tune in and listen to the FJS. Meanwhile, I think there was a conference, um, some sort of local first conference in Berlin this week. Beto told me about it and I saw an announcement from something called Livestore. So Livestore was developed, as far as I know, by Johannes Schickling. Uh, I think, I hope that's his name. I uh, hope I'm not getting this wrong. And they talked about this last year already. So Life Store is a next generation state management based on reactive SQLite. Like, what, what is the headline of your, your landing page? That is usually a good way to explain it. Build the next big app with synced SQLite. So the idea is to probably, or not probably, to have a SQLite database in, for example, your React Native application. That's where we could use it. And it uses a client to sync this, a backend, where it sends all the events, the changes of your app, and therefore builds up this, um, what they call event sourcing loop and the syncing between events. By doing this, you can build super powerful local first applications that also have sync built into them. I'm absolutely excited about this because building performant applications nowadays is really a great thing to do. And I've been on the live store waiting list for quite some time. So now they announced the first beta. You can go to GitHub. Uh, you can check out the tweet. It is at uh, live store JS on GitHub already 150 stars. It was like 50 stars less only an hour ago. So I'm pretty sure this will quickly pick up steam and I'm excited to see how this plays out with react native. 
um, how well it works in our application and how easy it is to include in our apps. So if you're interested in local first and these things, check out LiveStore. It is now finally available after a very long build time. <music> I don't really have a lot of personal updates this week, so let's dive directly into the build in public section. Last week or two weeks ago, I made my first uh, what I called React Native Essential about the draw navigation. This week, I released another one or I'm working on another one about tabs navigation. And I think you or people on YouTube actually really like this new format. It goes back to my roots and it's Honestly, also, it feels quite good. It's just one specific thing of React Native that I'm taking a closer look at. A video, 15 to 20 minutes, something to easily digest, uh, some specific knowledge included. And over time, I just hope to build up this library of different quick wins about, uh, or essentials, how I now call them, on all these different topics around React Native. If you have any uh, idea, recommendation, things that you should uh, think that should be included in this series, please hit me up uh, on the Discord server of Galaxies or on X or wherever you can find me, LinkedIn, and let me know. I'm always happy about recommendation. So right now, creating the tabs one. Next one will probably then be a combination of drawer tabs and stack, and like the full picture. I also want to do something about RSC because this week I was also working on a new course. A new course finally for Galaxies. So after the uh, Zero to Hero mission, this is our first new course. It is about Expo Router version 5, RSC and authentication flows. I think you're gonna love this if you're a member of Galaxies, if you're a pro member, go check it out. Because in there, we're gonna build on the new protected route setup of Expo Router version 5, as well as RSC, React Server Functions, API routes, including how to host them and finally use them in a real application. So we're going like the full mile. And I think I'm gonna do an easier version of this, a shorter version of like create an RSC and host it with EAS to do like sort of a spoiler for the course on YouTube. At least that's currently my plan. I don't know exactly if this is going to happen because I honestly noticed once again that a couple of weeks ago I told you I want to do a video every other week and that would free up my time and I want to have time for new things. And then I decided against this and I decided to do React Native Essentials and now I noticed that I haven't won any time. Like <laughs> the, the whole idea of having more time is like, it's gone. And I'm working again on these essentials and preparing essentials for upcoming weeks and I will be on vacation a lot in summer. So I don't know if I can keep up this pace of a video a week, a newsletter a week, a podcast a week. It is actually really a lot. And although I love to do most of the things, I'm sometimes also a bit low on energy, uh, just like I was this year, uh, this week. I'm happy I got this done, but I'm in the last three weeks until my triathlon. I'm very occupied, especially mentally with like being prepared for that race. I know I would just want to have fun, but I am also had a pretty good level right now so I kind of want to compete so it's challenging and I don't know uh, just sharing my thoughts so new course new essential coming and update on the mental health application I was building so I finally got back a reply from Apple this week um, apparently that wasn't too positive so my category my uh, quick quick uh, TLDR my app was called, I think, Mental Therapy or, or uh, something like that. It was pretty much like AI generated chats where you can talk to like an AI therapist. I, I wrote AI therapist in pretty much every place to make clear it is AI generated and not a real therapist. However, Apple decided that my uh, application goes against guideline 1.4.1 safety physical harm. This app provides medical related data, health related measurements, diagnosis or treatment advice without the appropriate regulatory clearance. Please note that the app is subject to all the local regulatory laws where the app is available. And the recommendation was uh, I, can, I should just um, attach my regulatory approval documentation in the app review and then we can get this cleared. I don't have any of that. I'm not like a therapist or any kind of doctor at all. This was all based on AI, but apparently Apple is against it. 
So um, to challenge this, I kind of rebuilt the application. I changed the title. I changed pretty much every mentioning of therapist or therapy to more like coaching. Uh, I included a bunch of disclaimers. This is no medical advice. This is AI generated. This is not human. Please contact a real human. And I submitted it again for app review. And just an hour before recording this, uh, or actually it was earlier this morning, my app went into review again. They haven't uh, cleared it yet. So I don't know if it's once again a problem or if they will finally allow it through. I will keep you updated on this app. Honestly, I told you last week already, I kind of lost interest in the app at this point. Um, and I'm actually ready to move on to the next app. You know, I'm also working on the Simple Invoice app. My friend Brett did a lot for that application this week. I haven't done. So after recording this episode, I will actually get back into it and connecting it to Superbase. And hopefully I will have more to show in terms of our Superbase, uh, our invoicing app next week. Oh, actually, there's one additional uh, thing related to the React Native news that I forgot to share you. Last week, I told you about this tool for React Native debugging by my friend, um, here we go, Austin. So uh, he replied as well once again, um, and he said he has built a new version of those dev tools and sent me a little video. So in the this tool, we can now dive into, so what did he say? Uh, you can now also view all your public ENV variables and gives you full control over storage, MMKV, async storage and secure store. Uh, like debugging all of that stuff, it's so cool. You can see the video if you're watching on GitHub uh, of his tool. I will definitely very soon make a video about these tools because this is becoming a really epic suite of tools for React Native developers. I'm so excited what he's building out here and how this will evolve over the next time. It already looks very, very decent. So keep an eye on this. In the last episode, I shared more about this that is now included with 10 state query dev tools. Um, and you can also find the link or I will also put the link to the repository of these dev tools once again below today's episode. Finally, a quick word on what's trending in technology today. Um, probably many of you have seen the demos of VO3 and what AI video generated content will look like in the future. It is crazy. Evan Bacon also shared um, a little video on X from an app called Vibe Code. They are doing, I don't know if the whole app is built with a Vibe Code or you can Vibe Code inside of that app. Uh, I definitely know that you, um, he has many successful YouTube videos. And it's just so interesting to see how dominant Expo has become in React Native in the whole process of AI generated code. Um, another release from a0.dev. Uh, you build everything, all these apps, all the wipe code apps, all the AI generated apps, everyone is using React Native. I said it before, this feels really good, but this week I'm more curious because over the last weeks, I once shared that I'm kind of stressed out by AI. Um, I think over the last couple of weeks, I kind of let go of this because I'm also more like physically active in sports and currently not really think that much about business and where the whole world is going, which honestly I think is actually a good thing. But I want to hear from you. How involved are you currently with like vibe coding, AI generated code? Um, I think we probably all use Cursor or at least uh, VS Code with Copilot integration and some AI generated code. But these tools, A0, um, what else do we have? Replit and Bold, all these tools generate pretty good code by now. And are you using that actually? I tried it in the past. I tried it with a couple of things. I never really got great results. It was usually a good starting point and I could take that and iterate on it. But at the same time, for me, it worked pretty well to have like cursor with the default expo project and then give it a requirement and then it built out the application from there. So I never really saw the need to now go back to these tools that generate an app for me in the first place. Also because I kind of know how expo go and pre-build works and all that stuff. So I don't know if we, or you listening to this podcast are actually the target audience of these tools. So I would really love to know 
if you're using this, are you worried about this, the applications that it can generate? Because definitely in all these marketing images and videos of apps generated, it looks really cool. But at the same time, I never got that great results in my applications. And I always had to do a lot of iterations locally. Uh, it was stuck. I had to use my own code because it hallucinated about using strange Expo SDKs that didn't exist or probably versions from like two years ago. So let me know. Hit me up on X. Uh, this week, my question for you is, are you using these AI tools or not? And are you scared about them or have you used them in any kind of productive way? So. It has been a very short week or a very short episode. I also feel like I kind of just recorded it, uh, the one before. Maybe we're going to switch to a bi-weekly schedule with a podcast in the future as well. But I'm pretty sure I'll be back next week because the FJS is happening. Check it out. Check out the live stream. And there will be a lot to talk about React Native and Expo News in the next podcast episode. So stay subscribed and I'll catch you then. Thanks for joining today's episode. My goal is to share interesting stories and insights into the world of React Native development. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. And on Spotify and Apple, you can leave up to a five-star review. Because podcasts, and especially niche podcasts like this, are hard to find, subscribing and leaving a review does help me a lot. On top of that, Check out my React Native courses on galaxies.dev that cover a variety of topics from getting started to building and publishing your mobile app. Finally, you can share today's episode with a friend or colleague who would enjoy the topic of the show. If you have any questions or ideas for future episodes, find me on X or leave a comment on YouTube. And last but not least, thank you for listening and happy coding, Simon.